Hello friends, thanks for stopping by. Today I am going to start a series that will include each week a pumpkin skincare item and something yummy made of pumpkin from the kitchen. So the first half of the video will be about the skincare and then I'll take you on down to the kitchen and we'll whip up something made of pumpkin. All right, so for today's video, the first pumpkin item we are going to use is by Sunita's and it is their pumpkin enzyme mask. This is a level two enzyme mask and this will help to refine. I have yeah. used many of the Sunita mask and I have loved all of them, especially the enzyme mask. So the pumpkin enzyme mask is a brightening treatment mask that dissolves impurities and dead skin cells while encouraging healthy skin renewal. Pumpkin has uh, alpha hydroxies in it and also fruit acids, which help with cell renewal or cell turnover. So it's really good to get in the habit of using some sort of enzyme. Of course, I'm featuring pumpkin because we are in the month of October and we are everything pumpkin in October, all right? But uh, it, it, you know, pumpkin also has a lot of other really good ingredients for the skin. It has some vitamin A, it has vitamin E, it has zinc. So there are many benefits to using a pumpkin skincare product. And today, as I mentioned, we are going to go ahead and use the Sunita pumpkin enzyme. And we will just see, it says, a uh, pumpkin enzyme mask, a brightening treatment mask that dissolves impurities and dead skin cells while encouraging healthy skin renewal. A targeted blend of organic fruit enzymes, humectants, and antioxidants help decrease the appearance of fine lines and wrinkles. It hydrates and refines the skin. It can be used morning or night, and it is for dry skin, normal skin, combination skin, or oily skin. It says apply a thin layer to the face and neck, leave on for 10 to 15 minutes and rinse with warm water. May be used up to three times a week and if excess dryness or irritation occurs, of course you will use it less often. So now uh, you will feel a tingling when you put these on. I'm just going to use this silicone mask applicating uh, brush that I have and I'm going to go ahead and pump some of it out. I should have primed it before I came here, but I did not. And we just want a thin layer, so I'm gonna go ahead, that's about, that would probably be if it was already primed, two good pumps. So I'm I go am going to look off to the side here because there is a mirror and I'm not really good, ooh, it smells so yummy. I'm not good with the phone. So I'm going to go ahead and just look in the mirror and start to apply this. And you just want a thin layer, you don't need to overuse, and you just wanna make sure you get it all. I don't go up underneath my eyes with the enzyme. And with the zinc being in here, this will help to heal any blemishes that you may have. It also has vitamin C in it, which is an antioxidant. So that's one pump once it's primed. So I'm gonna go ahead and take, well, it's not quite primed yet. <laughs> I'm gonna go ahead and just apply it all over. I do bring it up right over the lip lines. This smells excellent. I think this may be the first time I've used the pumpkin by Sunita's. I've used the cranberry and uh, many others. Pumpkin also has beta carotene in it. And the vitamin A, of course, is gonna help with, you know, decreasing wrinkles. So I like to get in the habit of using an ingredient with pumpkin in it. And you can take this all the way down your neck and it smells really, really good, just like pumpkin. It doesn't smell like perfume or anything like that. Now notice, Lula got me good right here the other day, and it's not burning. This doesn't burn it, so it's okay. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and take a little pump and just put it on my nose. And then we're going to leave this on for a good 15 minutes. You can take it all the way down your neck. You can do your jaw. And like I said, just a thin layer is needed. If your neck is super sensitive, I, I would highly suggest that you um, go ahead and do a test on it first before you go and slather it all over. But this, this tool, a spatula tool is really nice because it doesn't absorb any of the product and you can just kind of move it along and it spreads the product. You'll know if you need more because there won't be a real good slip going on with the silicone brush but I'm good here. So you just wanna make sure you have all the areas covered. And 
and leave it on for 10 to 15 minutes. So of course, I'm going to leave this on for 15 minutes and I'll be back and then we're gonna head on down to the kitchen for some yum, yum, yum. <laughs> I thought I would come back and just share um, the key ingredients to this Sunita's mask. And to let you know what I'm feeling on my skin right now, I have a slight tingling sensation, which is absolutely normal with an enzyme pumpkin mask or a cranberry or a pineapple. Any type of enzyme, it is absolutely normal to feel a tingling sen sensation, almost like the gentlest of heat sensation. But if it's burning, that is not good. But the natural tingling sensation and a very, almost a gentle warming is very normal. So keep that in mind. But if it's burning you, then you need to take it off. The key ingredient in this mask is organic pumpkin, which contains enriched enzymes to exfoliate and retexturize the skin. And then it has the botanical hydration complex. It's optimized lipid blend that fortifies the skin barrier to maintain skin hydration. It has a reconstructing multivitamin complex, a strengthening blend of vitamin C, E, and D that helps reduce discoloration, dim diminish oxidative stress, and deeply nourish the skin. And another thing about pumpkin that I don't think many people know is that the molecular structure of pumpkin is very small, so it is able to penetrate slightly. And I believe the Sunita brand is cruelty-free. Yes, it is. There's the Leaping Bunny, so it is cruelty-free. And uh, the ingredients are, um, the pumpkin's right up there, so it's got a good amount of pumpkin in it. It's got some glycerin, some squalane, of course the vitamin E, hyaluronic acid, uh, lots of good ingredients right at the top of the uh, ingredient list in this product. So really, um, I like the Sanitas brand. I'm actually using a lot of it. All right, so I'm gonna let this stay on. I've got a few more minutes and I will be back. With All you. right, my friends, I am back. I took the Sanitas Pumpkin Enzyme Mask off and I think you can see that it leaves your skin with a beautiful, beautiful glow and my skin feels really, really good. Now I do use a Retin-A, which um, really makes me peel, but if I take a look, you can see, usually in here I have a lot of flaking skin. It has just really cleaned all of that up for me. Really looks fabulous. I. I, I love enzyme masks. They're, they're probably some of my most favorite masks. I think it did a really, really great job. My skin has a nice glow to it. The texture looks good, feels good. The pores look like they're really cleaned up. And any flaking I had left over from my Retin-A is completely gone. That's why I love enzyme masks. They pretty much just eat away at all the dead skin. So uh, I am loving the Sanitas Pumpkin Enzyme Mask, and I did get this from Freeze Co. Beauty, but I have been really using a lot of the Sanitas. With my skin becoming very sensitive and changing, I've been trying a lot of different uh, products. So I bought this. I bought... Um, the Glow Skin Beauty Pumpkin Enzyme Scrub that will come up in one of the videos. And I also bought, I bought one more enzyme, but it's not pumpkin. I think it's the, I think it's cranberry. It's in the other room. But anyway, um, it's not pumpkin, so it's not going to make it into these. But I do love them. And like I said, I have used the Sanitas Enzyme Mask for quite a few years now and some I don't even think they make anymore but uh, I really have enjoyed all of them so I hope you enjoyed this so let's head on over to the kitchen now so for the kitchen I am going to start out with a pumpkin chocolate chip bread something like that it is very healthy and uh, I believe it is vegan and also I think it's gluten-free as well. All right, my friends, and if it's not, you can always make it gluten-free by choosing your choice of flour and ingredients. So the first thing you want to do is preheat your oven. to. Th I'm not going to stand down like this the whole video. I am going to stand up and talk. Um, it's just easier for me to use this camera right now until I get the whole setup going over here because I did buy a little heating device that allows me to cook right at the counter. Uh, for future videos. Alright, so the first thing you want to do is of course preheat your oven to 350. 
You also want to have a loaf pan, and I just sprayed mine lightly with Trader Joe's coconut oil. You can use any oil you like, or you can just lay down parchment paper. It's up to you. I like a little bit of oil because I just like my bread to come out of the pan easy. All right, so the next thing you're going to need is we're going to use a flax egg, two flax eggs here. And to, to make a flax egg, you need a tablespoon, you need two tablespoons of ground flax seed, which I buy the whole flax seed and I grind it in my little coffee maker back here. And then I measure out two tablespoons and I put five tablespoons of water and you let this sit for five minutes. So we have that off to the side. So for our dry ingredients, we are going to need, and I'm just going to dump them in the bowl as I go. Let me move the bowl over here so we can actually see it. All right, so for the dry ingredients, I am using a gluten-free, wheat-free, whole grain oat flour. Uh, you can use regular flour if you'd like, but I don't want the gluten because it upsets my belly. I do not have celiac disease. They did test me, and I do not, uh, I don't know yet. I go to the doctors this week for the follow-up to find out if I perhaps have a sensitivity. So in this, we want to put two and a quarter cup of oat flour. So we're going to just dump that in. It's really, um, when you're baking, it's always a good idea to have everything pre-measured for yourself. It just makes it easier as you go along. You don't forget anything. It's just really, it makes sense. Then you will need some pumpkin pie spice. And I have just put in two teaspoons of pumpkin pie spice. And you want to make sure you get it all. And I'm just using the Frontier Co-op. Everything will be listed and linked below for you that I use. And then I like a little extra cinnamon. So I am going to add in a quarter teaspoon of cinnamon. You do not have to add the cinnamon if you don't want to. I like a lot of cinnamon, so I like to add a little bit more. Then we're going to take one teaspoon of baking powder, and I use uh, the Bob's Red Mill. And we're just going to go ahead and pour that in there, and make sure you get whoops, make sure you get all of that. And that is it for the dry ingredients. So you have two and a quarter cup of oat flour, a teaspoon of baking powder, two teaspoons of pumpkin pie spice, quarter teaspoon of cinnamon spice, and then you want to just take a whisk, and we are going to whisk all of those dry ingredients together, just so we have all the lumps out and it's really distributed well, and you get a little bit of flavoring in every single bite this way. And you also get any lumps out that might have been in there because you don't really need a hand mixer or anything. This is definitely an easy recipe. So I've just kind of sifted it all together. So now we are going to go ahead and add our flax egg and you'll see it kind of gets gelatinous. That's what you're looking for. You can use two eggs if you want, but I want to, I'm trying, trying very hard. I'm not going to be a vegan, but I am going uh, mostly plant-based, all right? So uh, we're going to go ahead and just add this wet mixture into the flour. All right, we are going to need some wet ingredients. And for this, we are going to need a half cup of maple syrup. And just buy yourself a really good maple syrup. I like dark maple syrup because I think it has a richer flavor. So I'm going to go ahead and add the maple syrup right into the center of that. Then we are going to add a quarter cup of almond butter. You can add... Uh, cashew butter, pecan butter, walnut butter, whatever nut butter you like, you can add. Sesame seed, doesn't matter. I love the fresh ground from Whole Foods. So I, when I'm baking, I love to put fresh ground. So I went to Whole Foods and I just ground my own here. And that's a quarter cup that we put in there. And then we are going to add one 15 ounce can of pumpkin. I like the Libby's brand. I think it's because it's the brand my mom used all the time. So I am just going to add this 15 ounce can of pumpkin puree, not pumpkin pie mix, to the bowl. Okay, so we have all of the wet ingredients into the bowl. So now I want to add some lemon and I'm going to cut the lemon in half. This is a lemon that I used the zest last night. I just save it. So today I'm cutting it and I'm going to add one tablespoon. I'm going to measure it into a cup first, squeeze the lemon, 
because I only want one tablespoon for this. And I think one half of a lemon is going to be plenty. And then I'm going to add one tablespoon of lemon juice to the mix. All right, then I am going to take a spatula and I'm just going to start folding this mixture into itself. You don't want to over mix because then you toughen it up too much. But we are just going to mix it and incorporate everything. I do take the spatula and I smash the pumpkin and almond butter and the flax egg all together. And then we're just going to keep stirring it until it's fully incorporated. So your mixture will look like this. So now I want to add the chocolate chips and this is about a half a cup of chocolate chips and I use the Lily's dark chocolate, they're stevia sweetened, 55% cocoa, vegan, non-GMO, no sugar added to these. You can use any chocolate chip mix you like. Uh, Lily's now has a semi-sweet but I don't believe it's vegan. It may be. Um, I don't have it here. I was going to go and look into them and see. Um, but it doesn't have to be vegan if you're not. But if you're trying to cut out sugar, this is a really great way to go. And uh, the ingredients are unsweetened chocolate, erythrinol, inulin, and stevia extract. They do have soy lecithin, but that seems to be in everything. In the dry ingredients, I also wanted to put a pinch of salt, which I forgot. That's because I'm doing it on video, so I just want to mix that, incorporate the salt into the mix, but that should have gone into our dry mixture okay so now I'm just going to add the chocolate chips in and we're just going to go ahead and fold this in gently to distribute them into the mix and that is about it that's all you have to do now of course if you wanted to add some nuts to this go right ahead I'm not going to add nuts into it. I'm just going to put a couple of nuts on the top of it. So now we have our uh, greased bowl, and mine is just sprayed with coconut oil, as I mentioned. And I'm going to go ahead and just dump this into the pan. It smells fabulous. I love pumpkin, though. If you don't like pumpkin, this isn't going to really rock your world or anything like that. But I love pumpkin pumpkin everything pumpkin smoothies pump, pumpkin smoothie bowls pumpkin cookies my mom used to make a pumpkin chocolate chip cookie that oh I think I have the recipe I think when we were after she passed away and I was going through things she may have even given it to me before she died she was she really was like that she would just go through things and say oh I want Tammy to have this or oh I want you know my sisters or brothers to have something and she would give it to us before she was just that way. Okay, so now I'm just going to go ahead and spread this evenly into the pan. And this is going to be so yummy. I'm going to have a big, big, thick slice of it with almond butter on it for my lunch or my first meal. I'm just going to go ahead and scrape what's on the spatula off and just work it in there. I don't waste anything and we will just spread that now you can to make it look pretty I'm just going to wipe my finger off here first to make it look pretty you can just go ahead and take some walnuts and just break them and drop them on top of the bread so you just have something really pretty on the top and then they'll bake in as they bake like you can also take a couple of chocolate chips and just sprinkle them on the top of the bread and it'll just bake up pretty with the chocolate chips so there we have it so now we are going to put this in a 350 degree oven and bake it just under an hour it takes and the way to test it is with a toothpick just to make sure it comes out clean so I, when this is all done I will definitely come back and share it with okay, you. Okay, so my pumpkin bread is out of the oven. It looks absolutely beautiful. Of course, it has to cool for quite a while. It did end up taking just about 59 minutes to come out with a clean 
uh, toothpick in it. So uh, according to your oven, we'll determine how long it has to be baked for. All right, so I'm going to let this cool off and I will be back to share a piece with you. <laughs> All right, my friends, so I'm going to just set it on a cookie rack and I'm going to let it cool in the pan for just about five minutes and then I will take it out of the pan to cool the rest of the way. So I removed the bread from the pan and that's what it will look like. I'm still allowing it to cool before I dig in. <laughs> okay, so my bread has cooled down pretty much. It could cool down a little bit more, but I'm going to go ahead and slice into it. Now this you can have by itself. You can toast it. Uh, you can put peanut butter on it. You can break a piece of this up over yogurt. All right, so we're going to just cut a slice of it. And it's nice and chewy and gooey inside. So I'm going to take just a little bit of the pecan butter that we used. And I'm just going to spread a little bit of it on the pumpkin bread. In the morning, I might take this, slice it, and toast it so that it has an outer, outer crunchy layer to it and then put the almond butter on. But let's go ahead and taste this. I'll just take a little piece. But it's really nice. You get chocolate chips in every single bite. Mmm. Mmm. Really good. Not too sweet. Mmm. Really good. Give it a try, my friends. Give it a try.